Okay, so what remains to discuss is what's the what's the kind of practical uh, difference between the primary and the secondary response. So um, you might have seen these this kind of graph where you've got antibody concentration or some readout of the level of immunity on the y-axis and on the x-axis you've got time and you might have something that looks like this so this might indicate a first infection or first exposure to a pathogen and then this is the antibody concentration respond you know increasing in response to that infection so once the pathogen has is uh, making contact with with the body's immune system then you know the t helper cells are being um, activated by the uh, antigen presented by the antigen presenting cells this results in the selection of the t helper cells um, which then causes the uh, act, uh, the differentiation the mitosis and the expansion of that population to produce t killer cells t helper cells t memory cells and then the T helper cells activate the B cells and eventually that leads to the production of antibodies by the plasma cells. All that happens and then you get this gradual increase in antibody concentration, indicating that the, you know, the primary response is occurring. So you know, this first peak here, that's what we need to kind of think uh, of as the primary response going on okay the primary uh, immune response primary specific immune response on first infection okay now all you know most of those cells are kind of short-lived cells so they they they're around as as long as is required to um, remove the pathogen from the body okay however after a certain amount of time uh, the antibody levels go down because the, the proteins, they get degraded, they don't stay there forever. Um, and then we see the uh, antibody concentration go down. Now, you know, we might kind of, you know, just go ahead in, in time a little bit and then say, right, what, what if there's an, another exposure to the pathogen? So, second exposure. Okay, or, or second infection. At that point, there's, there's a few things that um, you should notice. First, that the response okay, so first thing is that the response is faster. Okay, so, se so the first infection is as we discussed, but then the second exposure results in a much quicker so it got to its peak uh, antibody production or antibody concentration much more quickly than the first infection uh, was able to reach its peak. Second thing is that you know, it's clear that on the second exposure there was a much greater production of the antibody. So the second exposure, the secondary response, which is what this is, is much faster and much bigger as we discussed okay and this is what it kind of looks like in graphical terms so our second exposure begins roughly there okay so this is the secondary response and remember that this is due to the kind of you know pre-existence of the T memory and B memory cells this is what allows that second response to be different in this way um, so this is what it looks like graphically. So what we're thinking is that the first infection, it, it takes time because we, and, and the reason it takes time is because we need, to, we need to activate, so we need to select, we need to select, we need to wait for the um, correct antigen recognition between the antigen presenting cell and, an, and a previously unactivated 
T helper cell. So they need to be activated. And then we need to select the B cell. We need to wait for that interaction to happen. And when that happens, we need to activate the B cell. Then the B cells need to undergo their expansion process and then production of the B cells, uh, the plasma cells, and then the antibody. So all of that takes time. So you know the selection, the activation of cells, and the expansion of those cells all takes time. So okay. So we need to generate the T memory cells, we need to generate the T killer cells, we need to make more T helper cells, we need to activate the B cells and we need to create, you know, uh, allow, activate them in order to produce plasma cells that will make the antibody. So all this needs to be done, as well as the production of B memory cells. But while after the primary response, the T killers will disappear, the, the T helpers will disappear, the, the B cells, plasma cells, they'll all go away, but we will still have T memory cells and B memory cells. And they are still around here, B memory cells and T memory cells. Now you might ask, well, why is it then we will still have to activate these cells? They still need to kind of um, be, go through, undergo an expansion to create new cells. Um, and we still need to produce antibody, but because these populations, this T memory cell and this B memory cell, they, there's, there's quite a lot of them, first of all, so they don't need to go through as extensive an expansion process. So first of all, there's more of these around anyway. Secondly, they, these cells have arisen from cells that have kind of been activated before. So these cells have already gone through some kind of activation process, and so, they're all, we can think of them as already kind of partially activated anyway. So A, there's more of them around than, than we had of the T helper cells in the, in, the, in the beginning of the primary response, so we've got more of these anyway. And these uh, cells, the T memory cells and B memory cells, they don't have to go through as extensive an activation process because they're already a kind of partially activated population from the primary response. Okay, now, so for those two reasons, this secondary response is bigger and faster.